Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I made a video like this a while ago about Hoyas, but today we are delving into yet another obsession of mine, philodendrons. Yeah! I'm going to be giving you some growth comparison updates, giving you a little collection tour, and giving you some of what I think are very interesting philodendron facts. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So, philodendrons are one of the most popular houseplants. They are so beautiful, they're so incredibly varied. They tend to make great beginner plants because they're really easy going and they tend to be very, very quick to grow. There's more than 450 known varieties of philodendron from super common to ultra rare. And I currently have about 30 different types in my collection. So I'm gonna take you through them all and I'm gonna show you how they've changed and developed over time, starting with the Philodendron Gloriosum. This leaf here, this is an absolute mystery to me. So it unfurls like this and I was just like, what on earth is going on? It kind of looks like it's gonna turn, like completely go yellow, but it hasn't changed in a good few months. And this is what she's looking like now. And I think this one is less of a growth comparison and more of a health comparison because when I first got her, although although she was doing okay, her root system wasn't fantastic. The growth that was coming out just wasn't, I don't know, it was kind of yellowing and it wasn't doing very well. And so a couple of months ago, I made the decision to completely chop her up. I can't believe I just chopped her in half. And I'm really glad that I did. I've got some sections that are just propagating in moss at the moment. And this is this is kind of the main, most established bit of the plant. And as you can see, she has rooted really, really, really well. And she is starting to give me some new growth. But I just think that leaf is absolutely beautiful. Touch wood, I've had no issues since I did it. So I am really glad that I made the decision to chop her. And I know I've just got her propagating in moss like this at the moment. And you do see them sold upright like this quite a lot of the time, but they are actually crawlers and they're gonna do a lot better if you plant them in a trough planter. So when I do come to potting this one up, I will be getting her growing in, in a trough. But yeah, I'm really happy with how she's doing. As I say, just health-wise, she seems much better than before. And I just am hoping that she continues to do good things for me because I think she is just the most beautiful plant. Some types of philodendron, such as the philodendron gloriosum, are known as terrestrial philodendrons, meaning that in nature they grow directly from the ground. These philodendrons are commonly crawlers and tend to require slightly less light due to typically growing in the shade of other canopy plants. And the next growth comparison is one of my favourite plants, my White Princess Philodendron. <laughs> soil just went everywhere. <laughs> Hold the soil in place this time. This is my Philodendron White Princess. So this is what my White Princess is looking like nowadays. And as you can tell, she has sized up a huge amount since that last clip. She's absolutely massive now and she's doing she's doing really well i've had a little bit of drama in the move i as you can see here i've got some browning i completely lost that half moon section of the leaf the variegated bit i had to chop it back which was such a shame and she is actually flowering for me at the moment getting ready to getting ready to pop some flowers but the thing is the flowers seem to have kind of been stuck like that for quite a long time they start coming out I want to say about five months ago and none of them have actually opened yet whereas with my pink princess that you'll see in a bit they have and I don't really know what to do because she's obviously taking a lot of energy to produce them and her growth is actually getting smaller as opposed to bigger and I really do put that down to the fact that she is using up so many of her energy reserves to give me give me flowers and although the thought of pollinating her does make me really excited and I would love to give it a go I would much prefer to have a bigger healthier plant so I'm not quite sure whether or not to chop them I'm not even sure if that would be a good thing for the plant because obviously not all of them are fully out like I don't know how easy that would be to chop so yeah let me know in the comments what you reckon because I'm a little bit baffled right now but yeah, I've got my mother grow light there facing her at the bottom so she gets light from down there. And then I've just got these, which I didn't like at first when I first put them there. These kind of just cheapy Amazon flexi grow lights. And they're kind of growing on me. I actually don't mind them as much as I thought I did. So she seems fairly happy there. She is still growing, albeit a little bit smaller than I'd like. But she's still growing. She otherwise seems healthy. And 
yeah, fingers crossed she keeps doing good things for me. Philodendron as a genus was given its name in 1829 and gets its name from the Greek words philo, which means love, and dendron, which means tree. Freely translated, that means tree lover because of how these plants tend to grow either attached to or completely from another sturdy plant, often trees. And the next one's an update on my philodendron Ernestii. I've got it planted in complete pond at the moment and it's grown really, really well in that. I've made it a little, a little self-watering pot so it's basically just a little reservoir of water at the bottom and it feeds from that. And this is what she's looking like now. And I would say this is another one that I would probably say health over growth because I did actually chop that plant completely up. I took loads of cuttings. I took some cuttings to the plant swap recently and I kept some back for myself just because it wasn't that she was looking unhealthy before. I think, to be completely honest, I just neglected her a bit. It's a plant that I love, but I just hadn't really given her my full attention. And a lot of the growth was a little bit stunted. It was very crinkly. It just wasn't looking as lovely and conditioned as I wanted it to. But as you can see now, she is, she's doing so well. And I'm so, so pleased with the growth that she's giving me. She just, I feel like she's just glowing. And I have also finally got her on a decent moss pole, which makes so much of a difference. And as you can see there at the back, her aerial roots are starting to form their own little root system in there, which firstly means if I want to chop and propagate her at any point, that is gonna be really, really easy to do. But it also just means that the aerial roots are able to absorb lots of micronutrients and the plant is likely to grow much better for me because of that. So I'm definitely gonna keep her on the pole. I will have to extend it at some point because she's a very, very, very fast grower and she is giving me lots of new growth, even now at this time of year, which I'm very happy about. But yeah, as I say, I'm chuffed with how she's doing. The mother plant is still doing okay as well. I'm thinking I'm probably probably going to chop the mother plant up soon as well to propagate just to I don't know just again to get her back to health really give her my all because I was not doing that before but for now I think she's a beautiful philodendron very unusual you don't see this one about a lot I wouldn't say it's like mega rare or anything like that but you just don't see it very often so I'm I'm really happy with it very pleased with how it's doing and I hope it continues to grow well for me there are two types of root a philodendron can produce. Subterranean roots, which are the main root system in the ground that provide the plant with water and nutrients from the soil, and aerial roots, which are used to climb and attach to other plants and surfaces whilst also providing the plants with additional nutrients. Subterranean roots are actually capable of growing up to 60 feet in length. That's 18 metres. Next is one of my bigger ones. It's the one that you can see trailing down behind me here. It is my Hartley philodendron. This is just a Hartley philodendron. It's, I mean, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. It needs a really, really, really good prune. As you can see, some of its leaves have got a little bit of damage on them. And this is what it's looking like now. It's getting so incredibly long. I've actually started to train it to climb the ceiling because those bits there would just be trailing along the floor. It is... I don't know if you could probably gauge on camera just how big it is, but it's pretty ridiculous. And I have also pruned it back since that last shot. I've taken multiple cuttings. I've propagated sections of it. I've given quite a lot of cuttings away as presents for people because it's just such an easy to care for plant. And I think it's just fabulous, but I think she looks really pretty like this. I'm potentially tempted to get some more of her vines climbing because at the moment, obviously I've just got I've just got a couple, but she seems healthy. She seems happy. She is a ridiculously fast grower and I just love her. I think she adds so much texture. I think she looks really beautiful and I'm really happy with how she's doing. Some types of philodendron, such as the standard Hartley philodendron or philodendron scandens, are epiphytes, meaning that in nature they typically grow off and attach to another plant. These types of philodendron gather all the moisture and nutrients they need from the host plants without producing harmful effects. And next is one that I've had, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know, a very love-hate relationship over the last year. I've almost got rid of it several times, but I'm very glad that I haven't. I love it at the moment. It is my philodendron golden dragon. There's no sign of any kind of pest damage or even cold damage, to be honest. I don't think there's a, no, there's not a heat pack in here. So I'm really, really surprised these have done so well. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So this is one that has been on a journey. This is what she's currently looking like. And when I first got her, I'm not gonna lie, I really wasn't a fan of her at all. I kind of really wanted to love her and I tried to make myself love her. And in the end, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna chop her up and I'm gonna send cuttings out. And I sent, I think about five or six cuttings of her out to people. And then I started propagating the top section of the plant, which is this bit here. And 
I don't know, the growth that she started giving me once again, once I chopped and propagated, I just really fell in love with. And now I really, really love this plant and I really don't think that I would ever get rid of it. Again, I think she probably just wasn't as healthy as she could have been when I first got her. And I don't know, her leaves just, they, they weren't that, they weren't that condition. They looked a bit rough and they just, I don't know, they weren't doing it for me. But as I say, the growth that she's giving me at the moment is so, so, so beautiful. And I feel really lucky to own this plant. So yeah, it's it's been a journey, but I am very happy, I can now say, to have her in my collection. <laughs> You might notice small drops of sticky residue, particularly on the back of philodendron's leaves and stems. These are known as extrafloral nectaries and are nectar secreting glands produced by the plant to, in the wild, attract predators such as ants, helping to protect the plants from harmful pests. And this next one technically isn't classed as a philodendron anymore. It used to be classed as a philodendron, so I thought I would include it in this video. But it's a plant that I'm always really excited to do updates on because it's the one that I found in the skip and I rehabbed and it's doing really well. It is my Thormatophyllum bipinatifidum. On my walk home, I found, I'm pretty sure it's a philodendron. If anyone can uh, confirm that, that would be great. Sticking out of a skip that was just being dumped, so. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna try and save it. Woohoo! Um, this can be rubbish pile in front of me here. So. I think it's looking really, really hopeful considering there's so much new growth and actually you can see there's some big growth points on it as well. So I think it's gonna be fine, you know? And this is what she is looking like now. Just look at the size of her. Honestly, I cannot even explain how proud I am of this plant, I think. She's just done amazingly well and the growth she's given me is just beautiful. This is honestly, I mean, I would say not just in terms of, I was gonna say philodendron and thaumatophyllum, you know what I mean? In terms of not just philodendron, but in terms of all of the plants I own, I would say this one is probably the hardiest. It's just bounced back so well and it's giving me lots of beautiful new growth. It's not in the highest light spot. I've just got it through in my bedroom and it just seems to grow pretty much anywhere in any environment that I keep it in. It's one that if it keeps growing at the same rate, I'm not quite sure where on earth I'm going to put it because I did actually divide this plant into two when I first found it in the skip and I gave one of them to my friend Emma because she really liked it and I was like I'm not going to have space for both of them because yeah I don't know can you gauge on camera just how big this is <laughs> it's absolutely huge but yeah as I say I'm really happy with how it's doing and I will always keep you updated with this plant because I feel I feel very happy about it. <laughs> Some types of philodendron, such as the Thaumatophyllum bipinatifidum, are hemipophytes, meaning that in nature they start their life in the canopy attached to a host plant, and as the plant matures it'll develop long aerial roots that will eventually reach down into the ground and deliver additional nutrients that way. And this next one I don't actually have a growth comparison to show because it's a relatively new addition to my collection and it hasn't given me much growth yet, but it is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. And I got this in a swap with my friend Lisa, a mystery plant swap that we did. And it's a plant that I'd wanted for such a long time. I feel really, really lucky to have this plant in my collection. I think the variegation on the leaf is just so stunning and it has rooted, I don't know if you can really tell, but at the bottom all around there, that's one big root. It has rooted really well for me. So again, I probably could pot it up now, but I'm thinking I'll probably wait till spring, just give it a little bit more time over winter to just do its thing, continue to develop a really healthy root system. And then, yeah, I hope it does very, very well for me. I've currently got it in my cabinet and a lot, oh my goodness, my propagations in my cabinet just take like that. They absolutely love it. The heat, the light, the humidity, it just does such good things for them. So that is where it will stay until spring. But yeah, I'm really, really excited about this one. Aerial roots not only absorb water and micronutrients from the surface of other host plants, but they can also lap up humidity from the air. This is why providing a good quality, well hydrated moss pole and keeping your home's humidity as high as possible often equals much fuller and healthier growth. And the next one's a plant that I bang on about all the time because I just think it is wonderful. It is one of my favourite plants in my collection. It is my philodendron code 69686. So this one again was in water, wasn't doing amazingly root wise. The roots were going a little bit mushy. I chopped them back a lot and then I put it in damp perlite which is kind of like my go-to for philodendrons if they're not doing amazingly like it just it's always worked really well for me. So this plant now is currently living in my cabinet and I am I'm really really chuffed with how it's doing obviously its growth has 
seriously sized up. It's getting pretty big. But also, if you look down here, it's actually getting ready to flower for me. And I mean, I, it's quite rare for philodendrons to flower anyway, but this one, oh, sorry, it's opening the door. This one, especially, I know it's in the cabinet, but especially at this time of year and considering it's just moved from my old place, I don't know if maybe it was flowering out of stress in the same way that Hoyas do, but I think, I think it's just amazing. Let me just move some stuff so I can get it out and properly show you. Oh, there we go. Yeah, she is really seriously huge now. And I have popped her onto a pole. And at the moment, I don't think she started to attach. But I think it's just, it's early days. And also, I have been very bad at keeping that pole hydrated. It dries out so quickly in there. I think, I don't know what it is. Like, it's not mega, mega warm in here at the moment. But the pole just seems to dry out like within within a day pretty much so I think I need to get a cup back on top the little cup and hole method to keep it hydrated but yeah I think she's just stunning I'm so in love with her so happy with how she's doing and really excited really excited to see what the flower is going to look like but just really excited to see what she does next Epiphytic philodendrons that grow on other plants are extremely robust and equipped to handle damage, meaning that even if they were knocked to the ground or broken, they're likely to form a new root system and begin a whole new life from that point. And the next growth comparison is my philodendron Paraiso Verde. This is a little philodendron Paraiso Verde and I've wanted this plant for absolutely ages. I've heard that they can be like quite notoriously hard to keep and they can lose their variegation quite easily. So I need to make sure it stays very warm with high humidity and lots of light, all that sort of stuff. And the Paraiso Verde now has just sized up so much in such a short space of time. I don't know if you can really if I put it down, you might be able to see better. I don't know if you can really gauge, like, considering... Uh, was that an original leaf? I think that was an original leaf. It did lose one of them. But just look at the size of that. I think it's got to be one of my... From what I know about it in the time that I've had it, one of my fastest growing philodendrons, just in terms of, like, scale. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes they take quite a long time to actually get bigger with their growth. And this one, it's just doing really well. And I also just noticed it looks very similar there to my Atabapuense, which I've never noticed before. Uh, but yeah, I love it so much. I love the variegation on this leaf. I think it's so beautiful. It's so speckled and dappled and very different from anything else in my collection. And yeah, I'm hoping to get it on a pole soon because if you look at its aerial roots, they are really, really like crying out for something to climb. So that is another thing on my to-do list, but it's in the cabinet at the moment. It seems very happy in there. And I'm super excited to see what it does for me next. You can propagate philodendron most commonly through cuttings, but also by seed. Pollinating a philodendron to produce berries, which contain the seeds, can be a very long process and can take anywhere from 10 to 18 months from pollination to harvest. And the next one is a really adorable one. It is my philodendron totem. And this little baby. This is a philodendron totem, little, little one. And it's just so cute. This is one that, again, I've wanted for such a long time and I don't know why, I've just never added to my collection. And so this is what it's currently looking like. And I said in a video recently, I, I almost don't notice new growth on this plant that much just because it comes in, in fact, this leaf's unfurling here, you can see, it comes in so curly-whirly and small and then just kind of sizes up. I don't tend to, I'm not as aware of it as I am some of my like bigger foliage plants, if that makes sense. But I think like putting the clips side by side, it definitely has grown and it's starting to mature and I love, love its leaves. Again, so unusual, so different to anything else in my collection. But yeah, it's it's one that I really like, but I'm just not maybe as aware as I am some of my others with. Does that make sense? That didn't make sense, did it? I'm not as aware of new growth on this plant as I am with some of my others, but nevertheless, it seems healthy. It seems to be doing very well. It's got very, very, very dense, compact growth. So I feel like it would be quite a difficult plant to propagate. I've never personally propagated it myself, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going with the flow with this one, hoping it continues to do good things. And yeah, I'll keep you updated. Some types of philodendron are what's known as self-heading, meaning that they send out leaves in a clump from the base of the plant that almost fully disguises its stem. An example of this is the philodendron tortum. Even once it reaches maturity, the stem's usually only visible once the lower leaves die back. Self-heading philodendrons also tend to grow directly from the ground. 
And this next plant's one that was a wish list plant of mine for such a long time before I finally got a cutting of it. It is my Philodendron Splendid. This is a Philodendron Splendid and I honestly can't believe that I own one of these. I swapped this with Memo, again, house planty goodness. I swapped this with him for my Ernestii, my Philodendron Ernestii. And the, I mean, honestly, I, I have not stopped looking at this plant. Oh, Yoli's just come to give this one a good smell check. But, oh, to put your tail on it. But this is the Philodendron Splendid now, and this one has just done absolutely incredibly. Like, look at the size of that leaf. Oh, yes, I know. I know. We'll go out in a minute. Yes, I know. What are you doing? <laughs> Yoli's very excited about it as well. Um, but it did lose some of the bottom leaves. I Okay, this is Yoli going into manic mode, which usually means she needs to go out pretty soon so I'm going to get through this quickly. I had to take off some of the bottom leaves just because they started to turn. You can see there's one here with a brown tip that I mean to be honest I think that's probably just the change in environments, lack of humidity, the fact that it's not getting quite as much light as it was before but it has given me that beautiful new leaf there in the time that I've moved. I'm also just preparing to chop and propagate this plant because I'd really like to conserve this lovely big growth at the top and not have it quite so kind of thin and leggy at the bottom. But yeah, that is, that's where it's at at the moment. I'm very excited about it. Also, do you think that's a little splash of variegation? I was looking at that earlier and I couldn't work out if that's what it was or if it was just weird discoloration. Also, I'm not quite sure what all of these marks are on the leaf. Not too sure about that, but we'll deal with that. It's otherwise very healthy and I'm very happy with it. Right, I'm gonna go take my dog out. Philodendrons are native to the tropics of South and Central America. Their natural growing conditions tend to offer long hours of bright indirect light and high humidity, something to be mimicked in cultivated plants in order to keep them growing healthily. And the next one's a beautiful bluey plant. It is my Philodendron Silver Sword. Um, and then this I only potted up a, about three, four days ago. Philodendron Silver Sword. Oh dear, the heat's got to my head and I can't think properly. I think it's a philodendron silver sword. And so this is it now. It's doing it's doing really well. I actually do now have three silver swords in my collection, but I just thought I would give you a growth update on this one because I feel like it'll be easier to tell when you put it side by side because this one I think has probably had the biggest journey in my care so far. And it's doing well, but I just noticed something when I went to get it for this video. There's a leaf there that, as you can see, is kind of wanting to unfurl and the stem, the petiole has snapped, which is such a shame. Obviously it will still continue to produce new growth once that bit kind of gets out the way. I probably need to actually try and take that. Uh, can I do it to take that out? No, I'm, I'm gonna have to do that after the video. I don't wanna damage the plant, but that's a shame. It does just happen sometimes. And I think especially at this time of year, like I'm actually quite surprised this plant is still giving me new growth at this time of year because it's so dark at the moment and cold and just not, not ideal growing weather for these plants. So yeah, I'm gonna try not to be too annoyed about that. I think that probably happens because humidity has been fluctuating. I have had my radiators on and although I have been running humidifiers, it's just, it's a bit like that at the moment, as I'm sure it is for a lot of us in the winter months. It's much harder to keep conditions stable at this time of year for me anyway. So yeah, that is, that is what it is. But on the whole, I think the plant's doing really well. It's a beautiful plant. I think the color of its leaves are just absolutely amazing. I'll put some clips in as well of my other two so that you can see them. One's just propagating a moss and the other one is a rescue silver sword that I got from my friend Sophie because she was getting rid of it and I think it's beautiful. I, I just love this type of philodendron so much and I know I say it a lot but I could actually fill my house with them. I think they're just so majestic and they don't really, they don't look real. They look so silvery and luscious and beautiful. So yeah, fingers crossed after this little bit, it will continue to grow well for me and I'll let you know how it gets on in another few months. Philodendrons are often described as perennial plants, simply meaning that their lifespan is over two years long. Assuming your plant's kept in the right conditions and receives the care that it requires, philodendrons are capable of living anywhere from 20 to 80 years as houseplants and upwards of 100 years in the wild. And this is another one that I don't actually have a growth comparison update for because I only got it fairly recently. It was given to me by my friend Emma and she was getting rid of it because she was just like, it does nothing. It wasn't bringing her joy. And I was like, I'll give it a go. 
It is the Philodendron lupinum, and I have very mixed feelings about this plant. As I said in my cabinet tour recently, it looks very similar to a micans, but it's much more expensive and it's much slower to grow. I mean, it seems in the time that I've had it, I think I've had it for a few months now, is that right? A couple of months maybe, but usually in a cabinet setup where it has been, my philodendrons just go crazy in there and this one has done absolutely nothing. So this is probably one of the philodendrons that I would not buy again and I would maybe say if you're looking for new philodendrons don't bother with this one. I don't usually say that about plants but yeah it's it's not doing a lot for me at the moment I've got to be honest but I'm hoping maybe at some point it will start giving me some new growth and maybe I'll fall in love with it. But for the time being, as I say, it's just kind of doing nothing in my cabinet, looking fairly healthy, I would say. And yeah, sorry, I really don't have a lot to say about this one at the moment. It's just, that's what it looks like, there it is. And if it let doing anything exciting, then I will 100% let you know. <laughs> Philodendrons are popular beginner house plants due to their adaptability and care requirements. They're a plant that's often said to thrive on neglect and are very drought tolerant compared to many other foliage plants. And next is the one that I just spoke about that looks very similar to my Philodendron lupinum, but it is much quicker to grow and it is much cheaper to buy. It is my Philodendron micans. I got this off the rescue shelf. And the one thing I will say is all of the plants, like a lot of the time when you go to garden centers, the kind of save me shelf, the rescue shelf, whatever you call it, has plants that look really kind of beaten up and almost unsellable or sometimes half dead. And I mean, I think, to be honest, I think, yeah, okay, there's a few tiny rips in the leaves, but I think this looks in pretty perfect condition otherwise. So this is what it's looking like now. And I would say it's doing okay. I definitely don't think this plant is as healthy as it could be. And to be completely honest, I have neglected this plant quite a lot just because it's a very easy plant and it's one that goes very easily without water for a while. And especially this last month with moving and unpacking and all that sort of stuff. It's just one that's really fallen under my radar. So it's currently in need of a drink. You can see all of its leaves are very curled. It has got some that are still a little bit damaged like that. I think it probably needs a good chop back, a good prune, a good water. And otherwise I think it's fairly okay. It's a plant that I really like, but I know it's bad, but sometimes when you have plants that are so low maintenance, when you do have a lot going on, they do just kind of fall to the back of the list. But I still love it. I still think it's a beautiful plant. I just need to give it a little bit more TLC. Philodendrons produce something called catafils, which are the thing that surrounds the new leaves until they've unfurled. Catafils are just modified leaves that help the new growth stay safe and free from damage as they form. Once the leaf has broken out and unfurled, the catafils will naturally soften and die back. And next is an absolute beauty. This is an update on my Philodendron Melanochrysum. Before it's properly hardened up and kind of matured, often has a really beautiful gold tinge to it. It's just such a beautiful plant. So this is another one that's been on a bit of a journey since that last clip. So I think literally a few weeks after I filmed that, I went away and it wasn't quite ready for a water. Oh, <clears throat> what's just happened to my voice? It wasn't quite ready for a water before I left, but I was like, do I take the risk and water it before I go or do I risk it completely drying out and being dry for a couple of weeks? And I took the risk and I watered it and it got root rot and I came back and not only were the roots completely rotten away to pretty much nothing, the stem had also started to rot. So I didn't really have a choice. I had to chop it up and propagate it. And it started off not doing brilliantly. As you can see, there are some leaves with a little bit of damage, but now touch woods, if you look at that beautiful new leaf that's just given me, now it seems to be doing a lot better. And it is a plant that I just, I really love. I haven't had the best luck with it. This is about my third or fourth time completely chopping it up and starting again because the first time it's got thrips really badly again when I was away on holiday. So yeah, this time I'm just very closely monitoring it and hope that it continues to do well. And it's got some insane aerial roots. If you look all down the back there, they've all properly, properly attached to the moss. So I think that's really gonna help again, as I said, with my NSDI. Really helps deliver lots of micronutrients, keep the plant growing nice and full and beautifully for me. And I really hope I have better luck this time. But for now, as I say, she's not perfect, but she's, she's growing healthily. So that is the main thing. 
Philodendrons naturally help to purify the air, making them popular plants to keep around the house, particularly in bedrooms and offices. As well as producing oxygen, they also help to neutralise many toxins such as carbon monoxide, formaldehyde and benzene. Oh, Yoli, Yoli, Yoli. Hang on. You're not coming through this way, you're not going to fit. And next is an update on my Philodendron Painted Lady. <gasps> oh my God, is this a Philodendron Painted Lady? <laughs> oh my goodness, Emma, this has been on my wish list. <laughs> it's been such a long time. Oh my God, you just hit me with two big wishless plants. This is a Philodendron <laughs> Painted Lady. So this is what she's looking like now. I am, oh, I'm really, really happy with how she's doing. As you can see, I have got her onto a moss pole and she seems really happy on there. She is really kind of gripping on, forming bonds with that and giving me some beautiful, beautiful new growth. I had her, but these ones were ridiculously fast growing, but this is my first Painted Lady, so I didn't really know what to expect, but... Oh, I love her. I love her just as much as I did in that moment that Emma gave her to me. I was totally blown away, but I think she's just the most beautiful plant. I have said this before, but I'm not a massive, I'm not a massive one for colourful house plants, but for me, this is just like the perfect balance. I like how she's got gorgeous kind of pinky red stems and I really enjoy the kind of very subtle splashes of yellow variegation. I don't find it too overpowering, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, she's currently tucked in there in my cabinet, seems very happy, and I'm very excited to watch her continue to grow. Despite being one of the leading popular houseplants, philodendrons contain oxalates and are actually toxic to both humans and pets. Ingesting them can cause burning and swelling of the mouth as well as nausea. It's also a good idea to wear gloves when pruning and propagating as the sap can be irritating to the skin. And I don't have a growth update for this one because again, it is a relatively new addition to my collection, but it is a little Philodendron Squamiferum. You can kind of tell the shape of the leaf there because they do have really unusual shaped leaves, but that usually comes with a little bit of maturity. And as you can tell, this one is still very young. But this one that I did have before and I totally fell out of love with it and I did actually end up chopping it up and sending it, sending it away to other people. And as soon as I got rid of it, I just, I don't know, I started really missing it. And I was like, oh, I was like, should I have got rid of that plant or should I have kept a bit back for myself? So I ordered myself one and this is the little one that I've got. And I just really love the fuzzy petioles on it. They're just so adorable. And I really don't know why it wasn't doing it for me before. I, I really don't know why, like I'm enjoying it a lot more this time around. So yeah, I'm excited to watch it, watch it develop, watch it grow. It's currently in, I mean, what looks to be very bad quality soil. I don't know, you probably won't be able to tell on camera, but it is just like rock solid and it's pulling away from the pot. And I know it would definitely benefit from a repot. So I do need to do that soon, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know how it gets on and fingers crossed it grows well for me. Good air circulation is important for all philodendrons, but particularly self-heading ones with a more compact growth structure. Due to their dense form, lack of air can often lead to mould growth on the stem and soil, which can lead to further issues. And next is an update on one that's been very up and down recently. It is my philodendron sodoroy aff. And the other thing that you have to look for is that the lobes of a sodoroy aff, these bits here, are going to be a lot closer together, a lot more kind of heart shapes whereas when you get a true so oh my god I can't speak tonight a true sodoroy they tend to be a lot more spaced out there's almost kind of like a bigger a bigger gap like that and looking at this one's then and now makes me a little bit sad because this one is definitely not doing as well as it could be this one has suffered with thrips spider mites lots of issues since the last time I showed you it and oh my goodness the last time I showed you it in that clip it was just looking beautiful so literally in the last few days I've just trimmed back a lot of yellow edges it's still got some still got some yellowing still got some damage but I am I am actually contemplating completely chopping this plant up and starting again I know I said that in one of my recent videos and a lot of you were saying no don't do it just trim back the brown but I know what this plant's capable of and I am kind of thinking that that's what I might do. I'm not sure, but it is still giving me new growth, albeit the new growth it has just given me has come out ooh, a little bit sad and deformed. But again, I think it was underwatered when I was moving and it's been adjusting and oh, I don't know what's going on with it. But yeah, I 
we'll figure out what I'm going to do with it, but this is just an honest growth update for now. Vining varieties of philodendron, such as the philodendron scandens, are typically less likely to have been hybridised and are instead usually just classified as variegated forms of the same species. For example, the philodendron Brazil is still a variegated form of philodendron scandens. And this next little one I only actually got a couple of weeks ago. It had been a wishlist plant of mine for such a long time. You've just seen the Sodoroy AF. This is the Sodoroy. This is just a true Sodoroy and I think it is stunning. At the moment it looks super similar to the Philodendron Brantianum, which I'll show you in a minute, but I just adore the bluey silvery plants. I think they're so gorgeous and the thing that I love about this compared to the Sodoroy AF is that this one is an upright. It's a climber and obviously the Sodoroy AF is a crawler. I don't mind crawling plants, but I I think I just struggle to find places to put them because obviously they take up quite a lot of space and I've got quite a lot of plants. So it's easier on the whole if they're growing up. So I'm very excited about this one. And as you can see, it has got a little leaf there just unfurling. It's currently in my cabinet again. I've put a lot of my, a lot of my smaller plants that I want to try and get to size up in my cabinet because it just does such great things for them. But I keep checking on this plant and I keep kind of seeing if there's any progress, anything like that. I know I've literally only had it for a very short space of time, but it's one that I had wanted for, I'd wanted it for years. So yeah, very happy to finally own it and Fingers crossed it will start sizing up fairly quickly and it'll be a big gorgeous plant in no time. There are several closely related plants that are often confused with philodendrons, mainly pothos and monsteras. Monstera stanleyana, for example, is still commonly known as the philodendron cobra. Despite each being a unique and individual genus, these plants are all in the arum plant family. And this next one, I guess, is quite a sad update. This is a plant that's gone through quite a lot of trauma since I've moved house and is definitely not doing as well as she could be. It is my pink princess philodendron. Another one that I absolutely love and people go slightly crazy over is the pink princess philodendron. To be honest, when the hype first kind of started around these plants, I really wasn't that fussed about them. I just kind of thought they were overrated and a bit Meh. So my pink princess has grown a huge amount since that last clip. However, she's one that, as I say, has had quite a lot of drama recently in the move. I mean, again, I'm not going to blame the move on everything. I think the main thing with this is lack of humidity and not as much light as she was getting before. These beautiful half moon leaves have completely browned. I know I need to chop them back. I've just been, I don't know, I've just been kind of putting it off, but <laughs> there's no way that's going to bounce back. So so yeah, I mean, she's big, she's beautiful, she has grown incredibly for me, and she is absolutely huge, but as I say, she's just in the wars a little bit at the moment, so I'm gonna give her a chop back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how she does, I'm gonna try and find a higher light spot for her, or get a grow light here, I have had her kind of like up against the window from time to time, but it's just not practical, especially with Doggo, who is eyeing up the plant right now. So yeah, she is however flowering for me, as you can see this one, this one opened uh, last night, the night before, and I thought about taking the caterpillar, uh, not caterpillar, the, oh, what do you call that? The flower sheath off. I thought about taking that off as I did the other one, but that didn't seem to work any better in terms of harboring pollen. So again, not quite sure. Look at the size of that one though. It's really crazy. And she is also giving me new growth still, and new growth is a decent size. So yeah, I've I've got some work to do on this one. And I know looking at her, how she was in my old place to how she is here now is a little bit sad. But at the same time, I have faith she'll bounce back. I'll happily make some videos on rehabbing her if anybody is interested in that. Just, just let me know. But yeah, for now, there she is. Vining philodendrons are often the easiest to care for and some of the lowest maintenance. They're also typically much simpler to propagate due to the larger internodal spacing, making it easier to snip and root. And this is one that I've actually never shown on my channel before. I've had it for about a month now and I really love it, but I just haven't featured it in a video. It is a philodendron atabapoense and it's a Billetier hybrid, as you can tell the leaves look very, very similar to the Billetier. But I was given this by my friend Sophie, who's wholesome house plants, and it was a full plant, but then Emma also really wanted some of this plant. So we decided to chop it. She took some of it and I took some of it and it has rooted 
really really well i'm very pleased about how how well it's rooted but as you can tell this leaf here is probably getting ready to die back which is a shame but it does often happen once you chop a plant especially if it kind of has quite big environmental changes as well and obviously this one went from her house to emma's house to my house and i think all things considered it is doing quite well and as you can see it's got a very healthy looking growth point just there which i'm hoping will pop soon and give me some beautiful new growth because yeah, I don't actually own a Billetier and that is another one on my wish list. But this one, I mean, it almost could be the Billetier. It's just so beautiful. So yeah, it's one that's really exciting me. I can't wait to see what it does. I'm going to try and get it on a pole quite soon, I think, because I know it is a climber and by the looks of those aerial roots, it would grip on very, very quickly. So yeah, that is that one. Philodendrons tend not to mind being slightly root bound. This simply means that they can thrive happily in a smaller pot with the roots slightly more condensed than many other plants and don't require as frequent repotting. That being said, once you notice roots start to push out of the pot or escape from the bottom, it's usually time to move up a pot size. And next is an update on my Philodendron Brantianum. So this is a Philodendron Brantianum, I think it is. Oh, I'm getting covered in soil look how beautiful that is i've literally wanted one of these for so long and yeah never actually had one before i don't think i've actually ever seen one in person and this is her now so this is a plant it might not look like a massive growth update because i know she's not huge but this is a plant that i have chopped back so much so many times to propagate i took a load of cuttings to both plant swaps actually, the one eight months ago and the one a couple of months ago. I've taken lots of cuttings to plant swaps, I've given lots of cuttings to friends. She's a plant that I think just because she does grow so quickly, I don't feel that precious about. Like I'm very happy, very happy to share her. And I think on the whole, she's looking fairly healthy. I know she has got some browning tips here and there and stuff like that. But again, humidity has been, been very up and down recently. Central heating, oil heaters, all that sort of stuff. So I think in general she's doing well and I think now that I've found a spot where she seems fairly happy I'm hoping that she should kind of continue to adjust and continue doing really lovely things for me. She has got a section of growth up here as you can see that's coming off the moss pole and this leaf is unfurling quite damaged. I think that's probably down to overwatering. I did have quite a few plants, another one that you'll see in a minute as well, quite a few plants that in the weeks that I was moving just really 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 seriously got neglected and she was one of them. She was bone dry when I came back to her because she'd still been at my mum's house. I hadn't been able to get over to get her and I was really worried about her. But the good news is the leaf above that does look to be healthy. So I have faith. I think she's going to be fine. I know she's going to be fine. She's such a hardy plant, but maybe not as healthy looking as she could be. But I'm going to say she's still healthy and I'm still proud of her. Silver leaf philodendrons, such as the philodendron brantianum, are attractive tropical plants and tend to grow with a much bushier structure compared to a lot of other philodendrons. And this is another one that was bashed about quite a bit in the move and is not doing perhaps as well as it could be, but I'm going to show you it anyway. It is my philodendron Brazil. The pot feels really, really heavy as well, so I'm just hoping that there's not going to be issues with root rot or anything like that around here. So yeah, I think I'm going to repot this one fairly soon and just check the roots. So this is my philodendron Brazil now and this is one that this is the one that probably got damaged the most when I moved house recently. She was a lot longer. She did come down to about there. She lost about five or six of her vines so I chopped her back and I'm kind of worried that there might be a bit of damage that I can't see further up because if you have a look in there there is quite a lot of browning and yellowing and bits of the plant that look like they're dying off and in my opinion it shouldn't really be happening she is otherwise healthy the rest of the plant looks healthy I feel like I know this plant quite well and it's such a hardy plant so I'm kind of thinking that maybe one of the vines snapped right at the top and I think I'm gonna have to get in there have a very good look and see what is going on but nevertheless she's lovely and full she as I say Maybe it isn't as healthy as she could be, but I still love this plant. I think it's gorgeous, very easy to grow. And all things considered, having been thrown in the back of a van and accidentally trampled on, I think she's doing pretty well. Many people confuse pothos and philodendron. You can identify a true philodendron by looking at the leaves, which are often thinner, softer, and have more of a distinct heart shape, as opposed to pothos leaves, which are thicker and waxier. 
The leaf stem or petiole of a philodendron will also be totally round, whereas on a pothos, it'll be slightly indented where it connects to the main vine. And then I don't have a huge amount to say about this one because it's not doing a lot for me yet, but I've just got a philodendron Florida green cutting and it's a plant that I hadn't had before, a type of philodendron I'd never owned. And I just got myself a cutting from Etsy because I love the shape of the leaf very similar to the Florida Beauty that I showed you earlier, but I just think it's got such a gorgeous form and I'm really excited to watch it grow. There are no roots yet. That is literally, that's what it's looking like, but I'm super excited to see what it does for me because I think the mature plants just look so beautiful. So yeah, excited, but not a lot to say. <laughs> To achieve fuller, bushier growth in philodendrons, often pruning back or propagating the top section of the plant is a good way to do this. Removing the points where new growth typically forms encourages the plant to pump its energy into other areas and often produce more condensed growth from lower points, giving the appearance of it being much thicker and fuller. And I know I have given you an update on this next one fairly recently, but it's a philodendron that just blows my mind every time I look at it. It is so stunning. I feel very lucky to own it. It's another one that I got at the plant swap. It is my philodendron Jose Bueno. I am still completely in awe of this plant, but this is a philodendron Jose Bueno. And again, it's one that I've wanted for such a long time. I got it from one of you guys, thank you very much. I saw this one and I literally said to her, I was like, anything you want on my table, just take it because this is just stunning. So the Jose Bueno now, although it hasn't given me any new growth yet, I think it's looking really, really healthy. I think that leaf is just amazing. It's glossy and shiny and it's beautiful. And although there haven't been any more leaves yet, it has started to give me a really, really fantastic root system. Like, yeah, look at that. Isn't that just amazing? So I'm pretty sure if I was to go ahead and pot it up now, it would be fine. I am tempted to do that, but I also think I might just give it a little bit longer because it does seem happy in moss. And this is also a mid cutting. It's not a top cutting. So sometimes it just helps them to have a little bit of extra, extra rootage. So I'm gonna leave it where it is for the time being. But yeah, although it doesn't get the most intense light here, I've obviously got my windows there, which gets a little bit of sunlight. I have got my windows up here as well, which give it quite good light. And it seems to be happy there. So yeah, I'll let you know when it starts doing anything though, because I'm so excited about it. Philodendrons can be extremely prone to roots rots, which typically occurs when the plant is overwatered or not given adequate drainage. To prevent this, always check the soil before watering and ensure that any excess water has time to drain away afterwards. And again, I don't have a growth comparison for this next one because I chopped it up recently to propagate and it is currently in my propagation box, but I will take you over there and show you it. It is my Philodendron Varicosum. So I haven't actually opened my prop box in about a month. Oh, I actually want to get in here after this and have a look and see what's going on because I can see some exciting things happening. But down here, this is, I've actually got quite a few Varicosums, but this is the one that's got its first little leaf. I think it's, I think it's doing very well. It's a plant that again I had a few struggles with and I have chopped up many times and again decided to completely chop up so all of these little wet sticks here they are also varicosum but I think that new leaf looks really healthy I think it looks happy I think I think my prop box is in a fairly good spot here because this window does get lots of bright and direct light and it just means that I don't have to have grow lights on top or anything like that and it also means that when the lid's closed I can put other plants on top of it which is very useful but yeah I do love the varicosum I think it's such a stunning plant and I dream of having a big one and really that one probably two years ago should by now be a very big one but it's just given me it's given me a few issues so yeah let's keep our fingers crossed for it but look how gorgeous that little leaf is yay despite being very tolerant and adaptable with their lighting conditions in order for a philodendron to produce flowers it requires lots of bright and direct light and long hours of it without adequate light philodendrons won't have the energy reserves needed to enter the flowering stage and finally, this is one that I am super, super excited about. It is my Philodendron Yopii. I mean, it's lovely. I'm kind of thinking it might be a Philodendron as well. It looks, it looks Philodendron-y. It's kind of got almost a similar structure to my Painted Lady. Oh, I'm so intrigued. I will have to, I don't think there's any 
information about what it is. And this is it now. As you can tell, it's sizing up really, really nicely. It was so diddy and small when I first got it, and that really wasn't very long ago. I'm very impressed with how this plant's growing. You can see with some of the newer leaves that they've started to make that beautiful shape. I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's mature because, oh my goodness, it's just stunning. And I've spoken about how much I love the Philodendron Code 69686. This one is very, very similar, but if anything, just a little bit weirder so yeah I'm really excited about it I am very pleased that it's still giving me new growth again it's in my cabinet seems very happy in there so yeah I'm I'm super excited about this one and I can't wait to see what it does but yeah, those are those are all of the ones that I have currently got in my collection. I think I've been round my flat so many times being like, have I forgotten any? But I think that is all of them. Um, and I'll let you know if I get any more. I inevitably will because I am absolutely obsessed with philodendrons. But yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.